I recently discovered that Synology's DDNS supports subdomains and Let's Encrypt wildcard certificates thanks to this excellent blog post by Marius Hosting, which I'll link to in the description below. This is great because through a reverse proxy, you can create multiple secured connections to services running on your Synology NAS using subdomains off of your main DDNS domain name. For a clearer picture of what I'll be setting up in this video, I'll start with an overview of how this all works. We'll first need to register a domain with Synology's DDNS service. Then create a port forwarding rule through our router back to the NAS. We'll then need to register a Let's Encrypt wildcard certificate, and at this point, everything should be set up for us to use subdomains. We can then create reverse proxy rules pointing subdomains to local services running on the NAS, which can be used to allow remote access to these services. Let's get started and I'll begin with setting up a DDNS domain name from within DSM. I'll bring up the external access control panel, select the DDNS option, and click Add. From this Add a DDNS window, I'll select Synology as the service provider and enter in a host name I would like to use. I'll then test the connection, and because the test came back with a status of normal, I'll click OK to complete the setup. For port forwarding, I'll enable external access from the normal SSL port, port 443, to the corresponding internal port on my Synology NAS. This is all I had to do on my router, but your setup may vary depending on how your router is configured. Next, I'll set up a wildcard Let's Encrypt certificate by going to the Security Control Panel, then clicking on the Certificate option. Here, I'll click Add to bring up this Create Certificate wizard. I'd like to add a new certificate, so I'll continue and click Next. On this window, I'll select Get a Certificate from Let's Encrypt and enable the Set as Default Certificate option. From this Get a Certificate from Let's Encrypt window, I'll enter in the Synology DDNS domain name I set up earlier, enter in an email address I would like to use, then in the subject alternative name box, I'll enter in a star or asterisk symbol in front of the DDNS domain name. This is what will allow us to make use of Let's Encrypt wildcard SSL certificates and subdomains. I'll then click Done to complete the setup, and now we are ready to start creating subdomains that make use of the Let's Encrypt wildcard certificate that was just created. For my first example, I'll select the Login Portal control panel where I'd like to create a subdomain to access DSM through the HTTPS port listed here. To do this, I'll select the Advanced option, then click Reverse Proxy. Now I'll click Create to bring up the Reverse Proxy Rules window where I'll give the Reverse Proxy rule a name. Switch the source protocol to HTTPS. Under hostname, enter in a subdomain I would like to use. Here you can see I added DSM to the beginning of the DDNS domain name I registered and added 443 for the port. I'll enable HSTS, then under destination, I'll enter in the protocol, hostname, and port number for DSM and click Save. Now in a new browser tab, I'll enter in the subdomain that was just created, and we can see that DSM loads up properly. I'll switch back over to the DSM session that I've been working on, and for the next two subdomains, I'd like to have them access the Roundcube Mail and Uptime Puma Docker containers I have running. For Roundcube Mail, the local port that allows access to the container is 9002, and with that information, I'll switch back over to the reverse proxy window and I'll click Create once again to bring up the reverse proxy rules window. I'll again give the reverse proxy rule a name and provide it with another subdomain. This time I added Roundcube to the domain. I'll again enable the HSTS option and enter in the destination using the port that was identified earlier and click Save. Now I'll change the address in the DSM tab that I opened earlier with Roundcube, and we can see that the Roundcube mail container loads up properly using the subdomain that was just created. The last subdomain I'd like to set up is one for Uptime Puma. 
So back in DSM, I'll bring up Container Manager to figure out what port is used to access the Uptime Kuma container, which is port 3001. I'll then switch over to the Reverse Proxy window and click Create once again. I'll add in the details to create the subdomain for Uptime Kuma and click Save. Back in the tab that I had opened earlier, I'll update the address to bring up Uptime Kuma, but this time it didn't load properly because Uptime Kuma is based on WebSockets. To get around this, back in DSM, I'll edit the Uptime Kuma reverse proxy rule, click on Custom Header, then click on the Create option. Here I'll select WebSocket to add the WebSocket headers and click Save. Now, when I switch over to the Uptime Kuma tab, we can see that it already loads up properly. Hopefully you found this video informative, and for more content from my channel, check out this video listed here on screen. Also, if you'd like to support my work or hire me for a project, check out the links either here on screen or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.